my artistic breakthrough in Heat Miser was on Cop and Speeder with a song called Why Did I Decide to Stay? And that was a much mellower song. I just liked that one better than anything I'd written previously. And so I just started trying to write more stuff like it. I remember working on Rest My Head Against the Wall, and that was really great. It was really fun. Elliot doesn't play on Rest My Head Against the Wall. It was a demo that worked out. And the slide was an acoustic guitar mic'd with that manly through Tony's AC30. And Sam is playing keyboards. That one was kind of a curveball, I think, from what I had always thought Heat Miser was about. You know, I, and to a certain extent, the entire album is, but that song, especially uh, like a ballad, and, um, you know, I didn't associate Neil with that style of music at that time. Yeah, I just, I remember I played a keyboard on it, and I was like, I'm still a little not really sold on the keyboard. Um, it was like a Rhodes, you know, panned out stereo, which to me, I associate that with um, like soft rock and, and all kinds of stuff that I don't like. But it seemed to work at the time. And, and at that time, it seemed a little bit subversive because Heat Miser had been this aggressive electric guitar band. And now we're doing this like Stevie Nicks shit that <laughs> just like, I don't know. But, you know, went along with it. And I, I think it turned out really well. I remember that being one of the ones where they had uh, recorded first before I did the drums. I came in and overdubbed the drums. I had this toy drum set that I bought and used the bass drum from that. It was a little tiny, like, 12-inch kick drum. And really the trick on that is I don't... Neil didn't do it to a click, so it's kind of like learning the song and learning where the tempo ebbs and flows and trying to make it feel organic. By that point, Neil had really learned how to work the studio well enough I don't know how much he and Elliot would do stuff together with, when I wasn't around. But yeah, he knew how to work things well enough to just set up and start recording. And then he called me up to come play drums on it. And as far as the mix goes, uh, he just wasn't happy with the mix that they got down at Robin Tom Studio in Arcata. And so after the bulk of the album was mixed, I did that mix at, back at our studio. Tony mixed that, sounded great. And... It just always was the version we liked the best. When I walked across this corner, pin my eyes to a shirt, cause I'm scared of being seen. Locked myself in a stall, rest my head against the wall. But to talk about what specifically Rest My Head Against the Wall is about, I had a crush. I used to uh, walk downtown in Portland and listen to music. I did that all the time. And I usually didn't even have a destination downtown, but I liked the walk. You walk across the bridge, across the water. And Portland's beautiful to walk around in. And so I would walk past this gas station, and the owner of the gas station was this guy that I developed a total obsession over. He was a straight guy, you know. I found him really appealing. And so I would walk by, I would make an excuse to walk by that gas station all the time. And it would be really thrilling to see him. And then afterwards, I would just feel sort of hopeless because I didn't know how to meet anybody. That's what... Rest My Head Against the Wall and Cruel Reminder are about is walking past that gas station and having this thrilling crush that would then, I would just crash afterwards because I didn't know how to actually meet anybody. I just didn't feel like I could connect with anyone. My experience back then was, you know, I was in the closet until, really until I moved to Portland. So moving to Portland was like a rebirth. The thing is, is I was 21 and I had no experience being in a relationship. Whereas all my straight friends, they had girlfriends when they were 14 years old. You know, they'd had some training about what that's like. And you, it's also something that you're taught when you're straight. 
I didn't have any guidance. It's also like AIDS had killed the generation of gay men who would have been mentors to people my age. And they were wiped out. So I didn't know other gay people. And I wasn't comfortable talking about how little I knew. And so I would just let it come out in songs. And the way it came out was just kind of this constant dissatisfaction, <laughs> which is a, sort of embarrassing now because it's, you know, this little white kid talking about what's bad all the time. But at the time, I was very lonely and didn't know how to make it better. I'm not sure that I never had the nerve Cause I've always felt like an easy kill But I'm pretty sure that I'm never gonna know 